I am not a hairstylist. Uh, I never really liked doing hair anyway. Um, and I always wanted a style that would last for a while. And uh, that I could just get up in the morning, maybe fluff my hair up and go. But uh, on this, what I'm about to share with you, I did consult with a professional stylist, someone who has over 30 years of experience in doing hair. And so um, what I consulted with the person about was this, was jerry curls and perms. Jerry curls and perms. So jerry curls, hmm. Jerry curls and perms, there was a, a, always a process that had to take place for the jerry curls and the perms. Uh, the jerry curls were basically used for curly hair, the hair kind of like mine, you know. And then the perms were used for straight hair. But the whole idea of both of them was to get some well-formed curls that would last for a while, okay? And so, um, even though they lasted for a while, you know, the hair grows out. So when the hair would grow out, you had to get a retouch on that perm or that jerry curl. So, since I'm more familiar with this curly hair, let's talk about the curly hair. I never had a jerry curl. That just wasn't for me. Uh, my brother had a jerry curl, and his name was Jerry, and he had a jerry curl. He wore a jerry curl for many years. And, uh, but you know, the men and the women wore the jerry curl. And I'm sure some of the men wore the perm too. But can you imagine a man in a salon sitting under a hairdryer with these rods in his hair? Get in that Jerry curl. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, if those of you who uh, may not have been around growing up in the 60s and 70s, uh, maybe you need to Google Jerry curl images and see what I'm talking about. But that was definitely something else. So I talked to the hairstylist about the process. And so what would happen with the curly hair there was a product that would be put on the hair to first of all straighten the hair out to take the, the natural curls away, take that natural curl pattern out. And then the hair would be set on these rods, these little rods, curling rods. And then the activator would have to be applied to the hair. And that activator would have to sit on that hair for a while to form this new curl pattern. Remember, it's going to be a new curl pattern. And so then, um, after that happened and the curl was activated, the rods were taken out, and then a moisturizer would be put on the hair. It called a, they called it a curl-activating moisturizer. And this moisturizer had to be applied pretty regularly to keep those curls moist and to keep them in a good form. And so a lot of times, some people will overdo it with their, <laughs> with their moisturizer, and they, they, they would have a dripping jerry curl. And if they came to your house and sat on your furniture, <laughs> they would leave their mark on your furniture from their jerry curl. And a lot of them, their clothes would end up with stains on it from the jerry curl moisturizer. You say, what are you talking about? That's okay. Just listen to this little story about the Jerry Curl. We're going to get to where we're going in a few minutes. But that they overdid it, and it would just be dripping. Hmm. Hallelujah. But, you know, the whole process wouldn't work and wasn't complete until that activator was applied. They could have done all the other steps. The hairstylist could have done all the other steps and left off their activator. All that work would have been in vain. 
And see, that whole process took about an hour or something or whatever. So that would have been just in vain. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you for this day, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for opening our understanding that we might understand the word that's ministered today. And Father, your word says, as we have understanding, the wicked one cannot steal the word from us. And Father, your word says, as we have understanding, the word will bring forth fruit in our lives. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for understanding today from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, you've been set up today because um, teacher Natasha opened the service. She had no idea what I going to minister this morning. But she just introduced this message so wonderfully well. And I just thank God for his spirit because it is the spirit of God that moves and puts things together like this. So my message today is the activator. See, in talking about that Jericho process, the activator is the most important part of that process. And this lesson is based on us understanding the purpose and the function of the Holy Spirit. And what does she talk about? The Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. So first of all, we have to identify this activator. Who is this activator? In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was up on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Another translation says, hovered over the face of the waters. So here we see the Holy Ghost hovering, settling on, moving across the face of the waters. And then the next thing we see is that God said, let there be light, and there was light. So the Holy Spirit, we have identified the Holy Spirit as the active power of God. What is the Holy Spirit? The active power of God. Hallelujah. Uh, if you had a jerry curl back then, don't be ashamed to say, I wore that jerry curl. Type that in your comments. It's all right if you had a jerry curl. We love you anyway, jerry curl and all. Some people still wear that jerry curl. Hmm. Amen. So we've identified the Holy Spirit as the active power of God, right? That activator was present in the very beginning with God. That activator was present to cause things to begin to happen as God spoke. Keep that in your mind because that's what will happen with you. The Holy Spirit, the activator, will cause things to happen when you speak. So what does it mean to activate or be an activator? To make active. Active means movement. Okay? So the Holy Spirit is what gives movement, causes things to happen. It's the Holy Spirit. Another definition for Activator or active is to make something more absorptive. Absorptive. What makes you absorb means to take in. You know, with porous surfaces, they take in water, they take in liquids, take in. So the Holy Spirit causes us to be able to take in more. Hallelujah. Say, I'm ready to take in more. You can type that in your comments. You can say it here if you're on campus. I'm ready to take in more. Hallelujah. Let's, let's continue to identify this activator. In Luke chapter 1, the angel came to Mary 
and was telling Mary that she was going to have a child. She said, how am I going to have a child? I, I have never even been with a man. I haven't slept with a man. I haven't had sexual relationships with a man. How am I going to have a baby? And what did the angel answer? He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore, the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So we see the angel in Luke 1 telling Mary what's going to happen to her is the same thing that happened in Genesis 1 where the Spirit of God overshadowed or hovered over the water. He says the Holy Ghost is going to come and hover over you and overshadow you. So guess what? So you can absorb, you can receive what God wants you to receive, which is the Son of God. And we know that that happened. Our Savior was born, hallelujah, through the activator, the Holy Spirit coming upon Mary. Let's look at something in Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. And this is a story about when Jesus, the account, because sometimes I don't like to say story because Sometimes story, the word story can give an idea of something fictitious or fiction, but this is not fiction, this is, this is real. So it's an account of what happened. It's an account of Jesus going to uh, the Jordan to be baptized. And John didn't want to baptize Jesus. But Jesus told John, he said, I have to be baptized. He says, I have to fulfill all righteousness. So he said, in order to feel, fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill the things that are right in God's eyes, I have to be baptized. That's another lesson for another time. To fulfill all righteousness. Jesus himself said, I have to be baptized. That's verse 15. And then John went on and baptized him. And verse 16 says, when Jesus was baptized and went up straightway out of the water, lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. He didn't see a dove. He saw the Spirit of God descending and lighting up on him. What happened? The Spirit did what? It was lighting up on him. Again, we see the same sitting on. We see the same hovering over. We see the same overshadowing that happened to Jesus with the Spirit of God. So here is Jesus receiving this activator. Jesus is receiving this Holy Spirit. You say, if Jesus was God, why did he have to receive the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus was God in the flesh, walking in this earth, and that flesh had to be activated. That flesh had to take on that Spirit of God. And a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So that when the Spirit of God came upon Jesus... It was an identifier also to who Jesus was. So as you receive the Holy Spirit in your life, it's also an identifier that you belong to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says those who have the Spirit of God, they are Christ. They say that if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're none of his. That's what it says. So we want to look at, Jesus had 12 apostles. And when Jesus was walking with them, they didn't have that activator. And Jesus began to tell them some things that was going to happen. He was telling them about what was going to happen to him and what was going to happen to them, how people would persecute them and how different things would happen. And the Bible says that sorrow filled their hearts. They did not have the spirit of God at the time. Sorrow filled their hearts. Jesus told me, say, sorrow is going to fill your hearts. And I want to say to you today, 
with all the things that are happening in this world right now, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't have that activator, sorrow will fill your heart. Dismay will come upon you. Discouragement will come to you. Discontentment will come to you. Fear will come to you. Worry will come upon you. But what did Jesus tell them? Let's look at John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. He had said a lot of things already. And he told me, say, sorrow fill your heart. He said, I got some more things to say to you, but you can't even bear them right now. But this is what he said in verse 13. He's telling them how they will be able to bear the things that he will tell them. How they will be able to go through any trial, any test, any tribulation. Verse 13, he says, how be it when the spirit of truth is come. That spirit of truth is the same spirit we see in Genesis 1. The spirit of truth is the same spirit that we see in Luke 1. The spirit of truth is the same spirit that we see in, um, in Matthew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Same spirit. When the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, I say, he will take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while and you shall not see me. And again, a little while you shall see me because I go to the Father. Now, we see some things here that's pointed out, and I'm just going to point them out quickly because I don't have an, uh, enough time to, to stay on them. But I told you that we were going to be getting an understanding of the purpose and the function of the Holy Spirit. Here Jesus says the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. That's what the Holy Spirit is supposed to do. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, how are you going to be guided into truth? You can be led into falsehood without the Holy Spirit. So he will guide you into all truth. He will speak whatever he hears from God. So you don't have to worry about being told something that's wrong by the Holy Spirit because he's speaking from God. They say he will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will show you what's happening tomorrow and the next day and 10 years from now. The Holy Spirit will show you. He will glorify Jesus. Hallelujah. And then he will show you what is Jesus. He receive of mine and he will show it to you. So Jesus went on to tell them in verse 20. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. You shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. Your sorrow will be turned into joy. That's John 16. Your sorrow will be turned into joy. How is your sorrow turned into joy? It's activated by the Holy Ghost. Your joy is activated by the Holy Ghost. Verse 32, Jesus says, the hour, behold, the hour cometh. I'm still in John 16, verse 32. Jesus said, behold, the hour cometh, yea, and is now that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. When you have the Holy Ghost, you're never alone. He's always with you. But Jesus told him, said, you're going to be scattered every man to his own. And you're going to leave me alone. You know, and Peter said, oh, Lord, I'm, no, that's not going to happen. 
Oh, no, Lord, I'll never leave you. I'm going to be right there with you. Didn't Peter say that? Remember, Peter didn't have the activator, though. Peter wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit at that time. The Holy Spirit wasn't given, is what the Bible says, because Jesus wasn't yet glorified. But I tell you what, Jesus is glorified now, and the Holy Ghost is given. But Peter said, I'm not going to leave you, Lord. I don't care what happens. I'm going to be with you. Huh? We all know what happened when they took Jesus. And they started trying him, taking him from place to place and doing all this. And, and there Peter was out in the courtyard. And they said, hey, we recognize you. You were with that man over there. Peter said, oh, no, mm -mm, not me. You got the wrong person. They said, oh, yeah, it was you. Oh, no, you got the wrong person. The Bible says that, <laughs> let me just read it to you. It said, Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came unto him, saying, Thou was also with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all, saying, I know not what you said. I don't even know what you're talking about. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> and when he was gone out, into the porch. Now, see, he changed places. He moved around. Another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it. But I know, I swear I don't know the man. This is Peter. I swear I don't know him. Mm -hmm. And after a while, Came unto him they that stood by. They gave him a little break. And said to Peter, surely thou art one of them, for your speech betrayeth you. And he began to curse. Blah, 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 blah. It's not me. <laughs> and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Jesus had told him, he said, you're going to deny me three times before the cock crows. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And then what did Peter do? He went out and he wept bitterly. He was sorrowful, just like Jesus told him. Say, y'all going to be scattered? You're going to leave me alone? He said, and your hearts are going to be filled with sorrow. Here is Peter, exactly like Jesus said, with no activator. I want to tell you, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will end up like Peter. You will go to church. You will read your Bible. You will pray. And as soon as somebody say, you one of them Christians. I know you one of them Christians. And you say, no, uh-uh, I'm, no, I'm, mm -mm, no, don't put me in that box. I'm not, I'm not one of them. And then somebody else, you, you'll go from your job to the grocery store. And somebody says, I know you, 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 no, uh-uh, that, no, that's not me. And then it'll get down to the point where you will be sorrowful and be bitter. Bitterly weeping and crying, just like Peter was. But what was the resolve? What's the result? We're talking about identifying the activator here. Jesus restored Peter. Jesus restored Peter. How did Jesus restore Peter? Jesus restored Peter with love. How are we going to restore people today, church Christians? We're going to restore them with love. Peter denied Jesus three times. But after Jesus was resurrected and came to his disciples, he said to Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? He said, you know, Lord. See, at some point, he just had to turn himself over to the Lord. And so Peter was restored. So we see that Peter, walking with Jesus all that time, believing in Jesus. You know, it was the same Peter that said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. It was that same Peter. And when it came down to that, he denied Christ. 
But we see another Peter. We see something happen. What happened to that Peter? Because we see a Peter who's standing up. We see a Peter who's proclaiming the word. We see a Peter who's being beaten and tell, being told not to preach in the name of Jesus anymore. And we see that Peter standing up say, you're not going to stop me from preaching the name of Jesus. We see this Peter locked up in prison. And we see a group praying for him. And we see Peter miraculously, miraculously released from prison. We see this Peter later on. Go and read it. What happened? The activator was applied in Peter's life. What's going to happen in your life to change those things and turn things around? The activator has to be applied. You need the whole process. You can't do just one or two. You have to have the whole process. Complete the process so you can get that jerry curl. <laughs> Hallelujah. What's different? What happened? See, Peter was in that upper room when the activator came. Peter and the rest had gone through the process, but the activator wasn't applied. They had gone through walking with Jesus. They had gone through talking with Jesus after his resurrection. They had gone through seeing Jesus ascend into heaven. They had repented. But still, they were missing something. They were still missing something. So today, you might have changed your ways and said, Lord, I want to live for you. You know, you might be going to church or watching church online or whatever, praying, reading your Bible. But is there something missing? Is there something missing? There was something missing. So the activator is applied. How is the activator applied? In Matthew 6, let's go back to that. Matthew chapter 3, I'm sorry, verse 16, let's go back to that. We saw this activator lighting up on Jesus. The message Bible said it landed on him. The passion translation say it rests upon him. Acts chapter 2, when we see after Jesus had ascended into heaven, he told him, he says, before he left, he said, wait, don't go anywhere till you get this power. See, Jesus called the activator, the same thing I said earlier, is the power of God, the active power of God. He said, don't go anywhere till you be endued with this active power of God. Don't go anywhere till you be infused with this active power of God. And in Acts chapter 2, we see them doing exactly what Jesus said. They're there waiting because they knew something was going to happen. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat... It sat on each of them. Remember, we, we already saw where it sat over the waters in Genesis 1. We saw where it overshadowed Mary in Luke chapter 1. We saw where it, um, it, it uh, landed on Jesus in Matthew chapter 3. So here we see it, it sat on each of them. And verse 4 says, and they were all, not one, not two, not five. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And what happened? And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The New Living Translation said it settled on each of them. So much so that the people that stood around Heard it, watched it, people all outside, heard it all over. And they said, Peter stood up and began to preach and tell them what it is. He said, we're not drunk. You think we're drunk? We're not drunk. It's only the third hour of the day. We're not drunk. 
But this is what Joel spoke of. God pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And then he began to tell them about this Jesus who you crucified and so forth. And the Bible says they were pricked in their hearts. And then they said, men and brethren, what must we do? They said, we want this activation too. We want this change too. What must we do? We want what you have. In verse 38, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said to them, repent. See, that's like the, the Jerry Curl process where they putting the, the chemical on there to straighten out the hair. Because see, then when you repent, you say, I want to get straight. I want to get out of this natural curl and I want to get straight. I want to get out of my natural way, that crooked and, and turbulent way and confused way. I want to get into the straight way. So he said, repent. He said, and be baptized, every one of you. I liken that to the rod being put in the hair. Rolling up, you know, getting that, getting in, in position, getting ready for the activator. He said, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remission of sin. And ye shall receive the activator. We can't put the activator on you until you've repented. I'm liking it to the Jericho because we don't, we don't put the Holy Spirit on anybody. Jesus is the one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit. But that stylist can't put that activator on there until that hair straight, rot it up, and then it's time for the activator. So what is Peter telling them? Repent, be baptized, and then you'll receive that activator. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39, for the promise, this activator is for you. It's for you today that I'm talking to. It's for your children. It's to all that are far off, everybody, everywhere. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Has God called you? Have you heard his voice? Have you accepted Jesus? Well, you have to go all the way and receive that activator. You have to receive that promise of the Father. Receive that Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John chapter 7, it says, Out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit that they that believe on him should receive. Do you believe on Jesus? Well, the scripture says you should receive the Holy Ghost. It's something that you should do. Is it something that God is going to make you do? No, he's not going to make you do it, but it's something he says you should do. It's something he has given you. It's a promise he has given you. And he wants you to receive that activator. Romans 8 and 11 says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, activate your mortal bodies. How is he going to activate your mortal body? By the spirit that dwells in you. You know, it's coming real soon. And I keep saying this. It's coming real soon. Jesus is coming back real soon. And in 1 Thessalonians, it says that those who are dead in Christ will rise first. It says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. I believe that that shout and that trump of God is the voice of the Holy Spirit. And those that who have died in Christ, when the voice of the Holy Spirit comes, is going to quicken. It's going to Activate their bodies up out of their ground to meet Christ in the air. And it said that same shout, that same trump of God is going to cause us that are alive and remain to be changed quickly. So that we can all be caught up together with him. You need the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. You need the Holy Ghost. 
You know, there was a series of books, and I don't know if they made it into a movie, Left Behind. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be left behind. This earth is not that great to be want to be left behind in. And things are getting worse, 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 worse every day. And the Lord said it would. So I'm not speaking doom and gloom. The Bible says that things will get bad. There will be pestilence. There will be all kinds of things going on. Earthquakes, this and that, wars, rumors of wars, people against people and all of this stuff. God said it. You don't want to be here. You want your mortal body to be Change to be activated into an immortal body. Also, this activator is a sealer. Because in Ephesians 4.30, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. What's going to keep you until Jesus comes back for you? It's going to be that activator, the Holy Spirit. See, there was a time in my life where I was tired of the, of the crooked road and going this and this and not knowing where to go, just going about in life and trying to figure out what to do with my life and where to go. And I started a process I wanted a well-formed life because I knew the life that I was living wasn't getting me anywhere. And then I applied repentance. I said, Lord, I'm ready to do what's right. And then I told God I needed a change of the pattern in my life. And I became a part of a ministry. I started learning the word. I started rolling myself up in the things of God, in prayer and in the word. And finally, one day, one day, I heard about the activator. I heard about the Holy Spirit. I heard about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I heard about speaking in other tongues. One day, I heard about that. And I began to say, Lord, if that Holy Spirit is for us, talking about me and my husband, if it's for us, you're going to have to give it to us. If it's not for us, don't let nobody else speak ever to me again about the Holy Spirit, about speaking in tongues. And I'm a living witness to tell you that as soon as I told the Lord that, I opened my mouth to praise him. And my regular hallelujah and praise didn't come out. Will begin to come out with something like this. How boroshe kete de dea ba ya kahida no roshe kete de dea. Kore de 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 ma ya da 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 sa. And I got so excited, so full, and just crying because I knew that that was from God. Because He said, if you ask me for bread, I won't give you a stone. You ask me for fish, I won't give you a serpent. He said, but if you ask me for my spirit, I will give it to you. And I knew then that there was God giving me his spirit. But I have to keep applying that curl activating moisturizer every day because that's God's power. I have to pray in the Holy Ghost every day. I have to keep myself built up. I have to keep myself edified. Praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, that was in March of 1985. And however many years that is, probably about 35 years, I guess. From that day to this one, I've never had a down day. I've never had a day when I was sorrowful, didn't have joy. Even when family members passed, I was still able to have joy. Did I miss them? Did I cry? Yes. But I wasn't sorrowful. I wasn't bitterly weeping because I relied on that activator to keep my spirit activated, to keep the joy. Jesus says, my joy I give you. 
Not like the world give, my peace I give you. Not like the world give. So that Holy Ghost keeps that peace and that joy activated. And I tell you what I apply that activated moisturizer. Because see, I don't have to get filled with the Holy Spirit again. I just have to keep it active. I just have to keep myself charged up with it. So I apply that every day. And you know what? I go around dripping. Just like those people that put all, I go around dripping. Why am I going around dripping? Because everybody I come in contact with, I want them to, to experience the anointing of God. I want them to experience the glory of God. So I go around dripping with that Holy Ghost curl activating moisturizer. Because that's what I need. That's what the world needs. See that jerry curl, that perm, things grow out, right? That natural hair grow out. And I'm going to tell you something. As a Christian, that flesh will try to grow out. You got to touch it up. You got to touch it up with that activator, honey. That's why you got to pray all the time, see? Because some people, some people use this term. Oh, they, they got next to me so much, I, I want to lay my religion down. But see, that's why you got to keep yourself activated. You got to have the Holy Ghost and keep yourself activated. You're not going to want to lay that religion down. You're not going to want to go backwards. In Jude 20, it says this from the Passion Translation, but you, my delightfully loved friends, constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith, praying every moment in the Spirit. I can pray every moment in the Spirit. I don't care where I am. I don't care where I'm, if I'm in the grocery store, if I'm driving my car, if I'm sitting in the house, if I'm on my porch. Amen. Even if I'm having a conversation with somebody else, I can take a moment. And you see what I'm saying? You keep yourself constantly and progressively built up with this activator. So today I want to say to you, if you have not if you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, if you don't have this activator, this Spirit of God coming up on you and coming up out of you, this is your opportunity. Right now, I just want you to take a moment, type in the comments, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. And I'm going to pray. There's no distance. See, I already know this. There's no distance in that. I remember when I first got filled with the Holy Spirit and I, was, I began talking to a coworker about it and just ministering to her, just sharing to her what happened, just like I shared with you today, what happened to me. And one morning we had gotten off shift and she called me and she began to talk about it again. And I just prayed with her over the phone. And she received the Holy Spirit through the telephone. So that telephone was just a form of media transmission, just like this is today. This is just a form of media transmission. And there is no limit in God. If you hear my voice and you're ready to receive the Holy Spirit, I just want you to say this simple prayer with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you promised the Holy Spirit to every believer, and I'm a believer. And right now, Father, I receive your Holy Spirit. You said if I ask, you would give it to me. And I'm asking now, give me your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I yield myself I yield my tongue, I yield my heart to you right now. 
And all you have to do right now, say that sincerely. Begin to just praise God. And right now I declare you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Just begin to speak. Whatever words you hear, whatever sounds come out of your mouth, just open your mouth and let them come out. I don't care what they sound like. I don't care if it sounds like gibberish. I don't care if it sounds like baby talk. I don't care what it sounds like. Just open your mouth and let it come out because it's not something you can think of. The Holy Spirit is allowing it to come out of your belly and up and out of your mouth. No, I'm not trying to teach you. I'm praying with you. Just let it come out, out of your mouth. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will overwhelm you, will activate you. You will see God in a way that you've never seen God before. You will understand God's word in a way that you've never understood it before. You will have joy like you've never had it before. Come on. Let it come up. Let it come up. Your tongue might feel heavy. You might feel like fire is in your mouth. But I'm sure that's how they felt on the day of Pentecost. But just open your mouth and let it come out. Father, I thank you now. I thank you now, Father, for all those who are being filled with your Holy Spirit right now. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your promise of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. If you prayed that prayer of salvation, we want you to know that we are so excited for the decision that you just made, the decision for Jesus Christ that you just made. Please remember to comment down below so that we can connect with you as you embark on this awesome journey. Before we go, we want you to know that one, we are praying for you and that God is with you. Two, subscribe to the channel and hit those no that notification bell so that you know the next time that we upload. And three, share this message with a friend so it can impact and maximize their lives. We'll see you next time.